Hi, everybody. I'm so happy you're here. My name is Jasmine Collins, and today we're going to be talking about leveraging your social media during a recession. This is going to be for the entrepreneur who is ready to prepare their social media to thrive during the recession. I'm so excited to talk to you all today. So welcome to class. Um, you being here means that you are ready to learn exactly what you should focus on during the potential recession on your social media account. So before class begins, please mute your mics. Um, there will be some interaction during class and I expect you to participate. Um, if you have any questions, make sure to ask them in the chat or reach out to me on Instagram or LinkedIn afterwards. And make sure that you have a pen and paper handy or a Google Doc so that way you can take some great notes during class. Okay, so on the agenda today, first we're going to talk about omnipresence on social media. What is it? Why you need it? Why it's important, especially during a recession? Secondly, we're going to talk about, we're going to do a platform comparison. We're going to talk about which platforms you should be on and why and how to choose those and what metrics that you should look at. So that way, when you are choosing which platforms to be omnipresent on, you're choosing the ones that make the most sense for your business. And then we're going to go into a simple social media strategy. We're going to discuss a strategy that will work for any business, whether you're product-based or service-based, and on any platform. And then we're also going to go into a Q&A at the end. Okay, so first, who am I? So my name is Jasmine, Jasmine Collins. I'm a social media manager who specializes in full-service organic social media management. Using my signature framework, I've been able to grow my client's Instagram account by almost 50% in just three months. So I got started in my business in 2021. Um, when I first graduated college in 2017, shout out to the shout out to the HBCU graduates. <laughs> so when I first started college, well, graduated college in 2017. I had started my own business and I had a business selling makeup bags on Amazon, but I was using Instagram to primarily get the word out there about my business, but I wasn't able to grow my Instagram account. It was just a bunch of bots, a bunch of um, friends and family, like people from school. Like it wasn't really people who are interested in my product or service, even though I was posting regularly and, you know, I was just doing so many things. I was working a full-time job and a part-time job while trying to get this business off the ground. It was just a lot. And eventually the business kind of fell through. So years later, I was able to um, learn how to manage accounts and I've been able to help my clients, you know, do what I wasn't able to do all those years ago. So I'm really passionate about this and helping people grow their business using social media. So, Outside of my business, you can catch me rocking out to Beyonce. Yes, I got tickets. I got tickets. So drop a disco ball in the chat if you got tickets too. Okay, I'm so excited. Um, I'm either listening to an audiobook or I'm spending time with my sisters. Um, yeah. So, so yes, um, that's me in a nutshell. And we're going to go ahead and take a break. Go ahead and get your phones out real quick because I want you to take a quick screenshot or a boomerang and put me on your stories and tag me so I can reach out to you afterwards. Um, if you do this and you tag me in your stories, then I'll go ahead and send you 30 free content ideas um, that align with the social media strategy that we're going to be talking about later today. So go ahead and pull out your phone, get me on your stories, tag me in it. My um, handle's right there. It's Jasmine Collins one Let's take a screenshot. One, two, three. <laughs> okay, perfect. I'm so excited to connect with y'all and talk to y'all after um, this is over. So um, any screenshots that you take and tag me in during the presentation will be just fine. So omnipresence, what is that? Like, what does that word even mean? So being omnipresent on social media means that your business has a widespread and consistent presence across multiple social media platforms. So in other words, you're not just on one. You, your business is on multiple social media platforms and you're active on it. Um, you're engaging with your audience, you're talking to them, you're posting regularly. Um, so that way you're, we'll, we'll get into why, <laughs> but that's what it means. And so this is important during our session specifically because social media is a cost-effective way to build, well, to reach, engage your audience, to adapt to new changing market conditions and to build brand awareness and loyalty. And since fewer people are buying during an economic downturn, it's important to get even more eyes on your brand. You know, a lot of people get really frustrated with social media because it is frustrating. You know, like, let's be fair. It is quite frustrating a lot of the times. Um, but never in history before have you been able to, like, post something and then get, like, 300 people to look at it, like, in an instant. 
or a couple thousand people. Like people will post a reel and be like, oh, you know, I only got 240 views. If you went out and you handed out 240 flyers, wouldn't you feel accomplished for that day? Like, wouldn't you feel good about yourself because 240 people learn more something about your business? Like, you know, we should be like grateful for having a tool like social media to be able to market our businesses right alongside these huge corporations and everything like that. You know, so I think social media is really, really powerful. Um, it's just, you know, we can build whole businesses off of it. So during a recession, it's a very cost effective way to do this um, because we're trying to cut cost. Um, and even though you may hire somebody to do it, like compared to traditional marketing, it is gonna be a lot less um, um, expensive. Um, so yeah, so yeah, I think omnipresence is definitely essential during a recession. So what does your business look like with and without omnipresence? So without omnipresence, you're going to be dependent on one social media platform. You're going to freak out whenever it's down or has major changes. But with, with omnipresence, you're not going to have that as much. So like when one social media platform goes down, like Instagram, they go out like once a quarter. They're constantly going out. Like you get on Instagram and it's like nothing's loading. You go on Twitter and it's like, um, what's with Instagram or something like that is always trending. You know, like Instagram, it'd be going out. And what are you going to do if that's the only platform that your business is on? You're going to freak out, understandably. Um, or what if what if you're um, what if they just ban your account? Like people be doing that. They'd be doing nothing wrong, and then they uh, their account gets banned. It happens. And then also with TikTok. You know, like there are certain states that are trying to outlaw it. So what if you built your whole business on TikTok just for somebody in a certain state they can't buy from you? Or you have, um, what if you're in that state and now you can no longer advertise because TikTok is not available in your state anymore? Or Twitter, they've been going through a whole identity crisis ever since Elon Musk took over. So, you know, you just never know what you're going to get if you built your whole business on TikTok or Twitter, sorry. So when you build your business on more than one platform, then you just don't have as much risk as if you were completely dependent on one. And another thing is that you have a limited audience reach. You're not getting the same amount of visibility or audience reach if you were to be on more than one platform, just because there's a limited amount of people who are on there. Like if you're advertising on, a, on an app that, if you're advertising for something that I need or I want or I like, but you're on an app that I'm not on, I'm never going to buy it because I'll never see from you. Um, but if you're on more than one platform, then you won't have that problem. And then you're also at a competitive disadvantage because if you're not on these other platforms, but your target audience is and your competitors are, then they're going to be getting all the people who you could be, who could be buying from you, you know? Um, so oh, also, when you do have omnipresence in your business, you have more touch points with your followers. People need to see your product over 20 times before they make the next move, before they even go to your website, before they go on your email list, before they buy. Like they need to see your your, um, your product and your business multiple times before um, they make that next move. So if you're on multiple um, accounts or if you're on multiple platforms, that's gonna help you do that. And then also you get access to platform specific features. So that includes stuff like stories. Like I'm a huge fan of Instagram stories. I think it's a great place to sell as well as a great place to build connection with your audience. Um, but if you're on like LinkedIn and you're only on LinkedIn, you're not gonna have that option. You're not gonna have the opportunity. So just, there's a lot of reasons why you'd wanna do um, be omnipresent on social media instead of just picking and choosing one. So here's some do's and don'ts. Um, you want to make sure that your content is unique to each platform and you don't want to copy and paste the same exact content without updating it to fit the platform. So that's like, imagine somebody's wearing this really cute like fire club outfit, but they wear it to church. Like, yeah, you can be making some fire content, but if you putting it on the wrong platform, it's just not going to do what you thought it was going to do. You know what I'm saying? So you want to make sure that your content fits the fits the nature of the platform that you're putting it on. And then you wanna choose your platform strategically. You don't wanna just pick a platform without researching it first. This is important because it, once again, you can be making some fire content, but if your target audience isn't on that platform, then it's not gonna be as effective. You know, So you wanna make sure that you are putting your content on a, um, on a platform that makes sense for your business and for your target audience. And lastly, um, you do want to pick an amount of platforms that you'll be able to realistically maintain consistently or hire somebody to do it for you. 
What you don't want to do is start a new account and then don't post consistently because I know when I come across an account that looks abandoned, just looks like a ghost town, I assume they're out of business and I assume like, okay, maybe if I buy from them, I won't get what I ordered or something, you know, because it's like, are they even in business anymore? So um, having a business or having an account and then not posting on it could hurt you more than just not having an account at all. So now we're going to move into platform specifics to help you choose which platform that your business should be on. Um, so let's start with Instagram. Um, this is the fourth most used social media platform. It's the most downloaded platform or app in the world. Um, the audience is 52% male and 47% female. So it's split down the middle for the most part. 61% um, of Instagram's audience is 18 to 34. I know a lot of times we think about TikTok when it comes to the younger audience, but they are on other platforms. And so 18 to 34, um, and there's not a lot, this isn't like the platform if you want to like go after like boomers, you know, but, and then 50% of US shoppers start their online shopping searches on Instagram. I know I do, I go to the hashtags, you know, so um, so I know that it's really, really common for that. And also if I want to learn more about a brand, Instagram is one of the first places that I go to. And that's really common for a lot of people. So Instagram. And then you have LinkedIn. Do not sleep on LinkedIn, y'all. In my opinion, if you are a business to business or B2B business, and you are a business who sells to other businesses, you need to be on this one. Drop the mic. Like you need to be on this one. Um, this is the most trusted social media platform because signing up for it feels like it's a resume. It feels like a job application anyways. Um, only 4% of LinkedIn users post weekly. Only 4% of people, everybody else is a lurker. So, so what this means is that your post will be like the reach is insane compared to other social media platforms, you know, because barely anybody posting, you know? And so your content, not only does it get more reach at when it's posted, but it, it cycles around a lot. Like it stays in the algorithm a lot longer than like on Instagram. Um, so the visibility because of that alone is insane. And then also the average user has a higher income than other social media apps. So um, if you are somebody who is going after people who have a lot of money, or like if, you're, if your product or service costs a lot, and you know somebody needs to have a lot of money in order to buy it. It's a great idea to be on LinkedIn. If you're going after business owners, executives, somebody like that, if that's like your target audience, you should be out there too. Or if you're somebody who wants to build your Rolodex, build out, you know, be like networking and get it to know other business owners and stuff like that, building relationships because it's not what you know is who you know. You should be on LinkedIn. Everybody should be on LinkedIn. I think that's kind of. I, I just think that's. I think a lot of people, most people, should be on LinkedIn. And then there's Facebook, the OG. Um, Facebook is the favorite social media app for people between the ages of 35 to 44. 7% of Gen Z users plan to quit Facebook in 2023. So if that is, if Gen Z is your people, Facebook is just not it for you. 37% of Facebook users will make a purchase on the app in 2023, which is huge. And then also this integra integrates well with Instagram. So um, if you wanted to, you could just hook up, you could just cross post things from Facebook to Instagram just by clicking a little toggle, like it's super easy to do. So um, if you're on Instagram, you should probably just do Facebook because it's so easy. Um, so yeah. And then we have Twitter, the bird app. So this is the world's seventh favorite social platform. Um, Twitter usage is going up um, faster um, than Instagram on Gen Z. So more people from Gen Z are joining Twitter than Instagram right now. So if Gen Z is your audience, take Twitter would be like another great app to be on. And then 62.9% of Twitter users are male. So if you're going after a male audience, Twitter will be great for you. And then also 76% of users say that they bought something because of Twitter conversations. I know I have. So so yeah, that's a great app to be on as well. And the last one we have TikTok, the clock app. Um, TikTok is the number one downloaded app in over 40 countries. 24% of its global audience is women um, aged 18 to 24, and male users of the same age bracket make up another 18%. Um, two in three shoppers say that they get inspired to buy something on TikTok even when they're not actively shopping. Okay, let me know in the chat if that's you because I know for sure that is me. I be on there. I have so many folders and screenshots of stuff that I need to buy. 
from TikTok. Like, I just like save it to like little folders. Let me know if you do that too, because I have a list of things and a bunch of screenshots. And so in 2022, TikTok was the top app for consumer spending, which I totally believe because I'd be influenced on TikTok all the time. Let me know in the chat what the last thing you bought from TikTok was. I got the Popeyes um, strawberry biscuit. It was so good. Okay, so now we're going to move into a simple social media strategy. I created three um, content pillars that will work for any industry, whether you are product or service based, um, whether you have a face of the company or not. I have three content pillars that are going to work for any business. And these are just going to be themes of your content, um, just different things that you want to talk about on repeat. So that way your business um, social media platforms are cohesive. So the first one is going to be expertise. And this is where you're going to show what you know. So this is your time to show your followers that you know what you're talking about, you're great at what you do, and you're a thought leader in your industry. You want to show that you're the expert. So this type of content and why you need it is because this content gives your audience the confidence that they'll be that you'll be able to solve their problems. Everybody, every business is solving a problem. So you want to prove to your followers that you can solve theirs. Um, and I have some content ideas for you. So you want to do case studies industry-related opinions, and before and after is problem awareness. Um, so this is a piece of content that I made on my own Instagram. Um, it is how my client has people waiting to buy for her restock. So as a social media manager, I wanted to show that I'm able to get results for my clients. And to do that, I talked. To, I made this carousel and it showed, because um, my client had this huge um, restock coming up and she had a bunch of people in her comments saying like when can I buy this you know like when is the restock and stuff like that so I made a carousel showing all the receipts of people waiting to buy her product that I talked about the strategy that we use to help her get these results um, and so that was a piece of expertise content that I made for myself and then personal content so Personal content, well, let's go back to this. <laughs> on expertise content, one thing that I do want to say is that this is to show people that you're the person for the job instead of showing people how to do your job. So that's why I don't call this educational because I'm not going to teach you how to be a social media manager because then I'll just attract other social media managers. Like I'm going to talk about the results I can get for my clients and, you know, just like more high level things versus like, this is how you run to buy Instagram. You know what I'm saying? So like if I was a dentist, I wouldn't be showing you like a tutorial on um, like how to fill a cavity or something because that's not what it's for, you know? So, so yeah, expertise content over educational content. So personal content. Personal content is, um, this is gonna be what shows your audience what you stand for, what you support and gives a glimpse of your life behind the scenes of your business. This is for every business. So um, this type of content builds connection with you, with your business, and with your audience. People buy from people, so you want to show up in a way that makes sense for your business. Um, content can include charities, causes you support, behind the scenes, sneak, sneak peeks, employee shout outs, CEO birthdays, and volunteer work. So you want to give people a glimpse. You don't have to <laughs> be out here giving all your business, you know what I'm saying? Just something that people can build connection with you on and something that makes sense for your business too. So one type of content that I did was I made this post and it was talking about me running over a dog in January and how even though I was stranded out of state for a month, my clients didn't see any difference in the in the service, you know? And I talked, you know, in the caption, I first talked about the story of me running over this dog and I went to go look for it and I still don't know what happened to the dog to this day. I went to go look for it but my car overheated and then I was stranded in Missouri for a month and it was supposed to be just like a weekend trip but I tied that into my business by saying since I prioritized client experience I was still able to give like I was still able to have meetings engage on their accounts post that went out there wasn't you know any type of hiccup in their service so that's how I tied this back to my business. Between me and you, I don't know how I'm about to tie Beyonce back into my social media business, but they are gonna get a whole recap of my entire night, okay? <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna make that work, but we are gonna make it work. Anyway, so, so yeah, every business to do personal. Um, I, I'm a strong believer in showing your face on camera. This is a great time to do that and even if you're like a corporate business or something like that, and you don't have like a faith, you can still do like employee shout outs. I have a client who's really big on sustainability and she has a hair care line. And even though um, 
you would think these two don't, things don't really go together or it's like, how can I make this personal? We talk about why this is important for the business and we make content about that. Sustainability, sustainability in the black community and um, the beauty industry and stuff like that. So that's an example of personal content for somebody who doesn't have like a, a face at the company. So three is objection content. So objection content is going to be, um, this is gonna be your time to remove any doubt about hiring for services or buying your product. So why you need it? You need this because every business is gonna deal with objections to buying and your content is a great place to address those. Addressing your objections head on speeds up the buying process. Um, and then content ideas. Now this is gonna, this one is like the hardest one to come up with content ideas for. If you can come up with a couple and you just keep talking about that same couple, that's fine. That's fine. People need to hear stuff over and over again. So to come up with that list of content ideas, you're going to make a list of objections. Like, what do you hear? Why are people not buying from you? Like, what are they telling you? And then you're going to make a list of counter arguments and then use that as content. So an example would be, this is too expensive. And your, counter, your content can say the real cost of not hiring a tax professional, you know, um, the real cost of using TurboTax instead of going to me, the real cost of not going to the dentist, you know, then just letting your teeth rot, you know. So this is an example that I did um, when you DIY your socials instead of hiring a professional. So in this one, I was talking about like, um, like if you DIY your socials, then you may be inconsistent on your social media platforms. But when you hire a professional, then you'll get your content a month in advance and you'll be able to approve it and you won't have to worry about it and come up with new content ideas and stuff like that. Um, we're also trying to have a strat, like when you have to like make hashtags, I know a lot of people have issues with that. So um, like instead of just kind of adding on hashtags willy nilly, I said that your hashtags aren't just strategic, it makes sense for each post. So that's kind of the difference. Or that's an example of objection content. So lastly, we're gonna go into ongoing social media tasks for social media success. Um, for one, you should be posting consistently. You knew that was coming. <laughs> um, you should be posting consistently. This helps you in the algorithm and keeps you top of mind. Because if you're not posting on a regular basis, people will forget about you. You know, you have to be posting on a consistent basis to be remembered. Um, I mean, have you, did you see how many times they were posting The Little Mermaid? And that's Disney. So Disney got to promote a whole bunch. So do you, you know? And then you also want to engage with your target audience. You want to seek out people who need your product or service and show them some love. So whether that's through hashtag or somebody who is following your competitor. Seek these people out on social media, like a couple of pictures, leave some genuine comments, ask some questions, respond to their stories, something, you know, send them a DM, like, you know, make friends with these people. Cause you can't, you know, social media is a two way street. You can't just expect people to engage with you. You have to also engage with other people. Um, so you wanna make sure that you are doing that for like 30 minutes a day. And then show your face. Isn't she adorable? So show your face. Um, this is the cheat code for the connection. Like I said earlier, people buy from people. So you want to make sure that you're um, showing your face, talking, whether this is going live, um, making video content, talking on your stories, doing something that shows your face and lets people know who you are. I like videos more than pictures, but you should be doing both. <laughs> And another thing is you want to keep your account optimized. So your highlights, your bios, your link, your stories, your content itself. You want to make sure that your content is easy to find, it's on brand, and it makes sense um, that and it leads people down the buyer's journey. And the last thing is you want to spy on your competition. So keep an eye on co what content is performing well and how you can use that as inspiration and make it make sense for your brand and your company. So, um, so yeah, that is my presentation. Let me know what questions you guys have. Thank you so much for coming. Um, connect with me on Instagram. I hope to see you guys. I really want to follow you guys back. So go ahead and follow me and I'll follow you guys back. And what are your questions? So many gems. I'm talking about people were talking so much in the chat. They did not even have a chance to emote, girl. Like you killed that first of all, Jasmine. Thank you so much, Mama Sita. Yeah, no problem. It was a lot of fun. I was I'm happy to drop some gems for y'all. So good. We gotta be okay. each other, you know. So I'm happy I could yeah. do that.
everybody. You killed it. I'm gonna um you have a, a lot of questions. Um and y'all just FYI, there is time. Uh Jazz will be able to take her time with this one, okay? Because our next session doesn't start until the top of the next hour. So don't hold back. Um, I am going to start with a question from Andrea. Hey, Andrea. Uh, and she asks, what is some advice for introverted personalities who are overwhelmed by sharing slash posting on social media? Okay. So first of all, I am an introvert, so I totally get that. It is hard. You know, uh, one thing that helped me is making videos knowing that I'm not going to post them, you know, because that completely removes the pressure, but also gets me used to talking to my phone. Like there were so many times I would pull out my phone, start filming, and then I'll just start laughing because I just felt so silly talking to my phone, you know, or like uh, doing these silly trends and stuff like that. It just felt so silly. Um, and then to like get out of your box, that can be really uncomfortable. Um, so sometimes you just you know, a lot of it is just doing it. But also another thing that you can do is there's an app that's called Teleprompter. And, and that app allows you to create a script. And then you're just reading your script. Because I know that I'll have a lot going on in here, a lot of stuff that I could say or would say, but I just don't. You know, um, I think that's true with a lot of introverts. It's not that there's nothing going on. We just don't really say much. But that doesn't make us any less of experts or whatever. And so that doesn't make you so basically, like, just put all of your thoughts out onto, like, a notes app or something like that. Get it to a script that sounds like you're talking naturally. And then add it into the teleprompter app. And then that will um, take a lot of pressure off of filming. You know, that's something that I find. So and good. also, you really have to see content creation as, like, a true money-making asset in your business. You know, um, if you want to use social media for to get leads or to get in front of your audience or something like that, you know, um, I think it's also a mindset shift of, like, this is just a part of my job, you know. Or you can hire somebody to do it for you. Um, there's there's a, something called um, Billo, B-I-L-L-O, and you can hire um, user-generated content creators to make content for your brand if you just really don't want to get on camera yourself. I say so many practical, tactical things that you can do today. Uh, thank you so much for that, Jazz. I'm going to bring up a Hira onto the stage. Hira, the mic is yours. Hello, can you hear me? Hi, ladies. First of all, Jasmine, thank you so much. I really enjoyed this piece. I was talking to one of my um, one of the other ladies on here, telling her that that she needs to come on to your particular segment. So I really do appreciate it. Question that I have. Um, so I am a grief. I'm a certified grief coach, and mm -hmm. I am. I'm I'm struggling with my social media presence because of the topic is so heavy. You know, this isn't, yeah. you know, it's it's different from being that of a life coach. And so I've taken upon myself to even start a podcast. My question is, do you view podcasting as its own type of social media platform? And what else can I do with it besides, you know, uploading it on, say, Spotify or YouTube, um, you know, or, you know, because my my audience is broad, you know. I I wish I could single it out to where it's just a certain age range, but grief impacts everybody. So, what do you suggest? Um, yeah. So, as far as like podcasting, so your goal is to be like, you we want more people to listen to podcasts. I'm assuming, right? I do want people to listen to the podcast, but it's also to let people know that I'm a grief coach and I would like to help them on their journey. So I, I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. I talk in groups or even do speaking engagements about the topic itself. Okay. So what I would do as far as like repurposing the podcast, like if I, like if I was the social media manager on that account, what mm -hmm. I would do is I would take like quotes from it and turn that into like a graphic. You can also do like an audio graphic, you know, like have it talking. Um, and you can also do like carousels and like breaking that up. 
Um, okay. And like taking couple, some of your bigger ideas and then turning those into like Instagram carousels. Do, do you know what carousels are? I always say that and some people, they, they never heard the term. You'll, you'll have to educate me, sis. I'm, okay. I'm still getting familiar with the, some of the okay. terminology, especially with Instagram. I'm, I buy stuff, but I don't really post on there. So if you could, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> so yeah, so the carousel, that's going to be any post that you see has multiple um, pictures or videos on one post. So when you're swiping it throughout one post, you know, um, so I post six pictures at one time. It does it time. You, know, you know what I'm talking about when I say that? Yes. Yes, I do. Okay. So, yeah. so I would take like some of your bigger ideas and turn those into carousel posts. So say you have like a... a podcast that's about um ways to get over grief i would say like say your podcast goes into like 10 ways to get over grief or something like that to 10 things to do while you're in grief or something i would say like three ways on instagram and then for the other seven go to this podcast episode number 237 you know um, understood and so since i post, i don't do too much with podcasts i'm mostly just staying on social media um but then also with like grief coaching and grief counseling. Um, so you want to pull in more clients for that, right? Correct. Yes. Okay. And so, um, so is your specific struggle or question, like how do you pull in clients from the podcast? Yeah. Yes. Be because this is, this is all new. I, I just launched this. Um, I'm just launched this literally like maybe two months ago. So I'm still um, working on building my audience and, and clients. So for me, I'm a Facebooker, you know, that I'm okay. like, um, like, uh, Kat, um, like you said earlier, it's the OG. So I'm, I'm a Facebooker. I don't necessarily okay. connect with TikTok or Twitter because it's, it's a generation Z or early, you know, later mm -hmm. millennials. So I'm working on connecting with that of the Facebook and, you know, I am very, I am active on Instagram um, and that of uh, I'm working on being more active in, in, in um, link. No, I'm, I'm more, sorry. I'm more active on LinkedIn okay. <laughs> and Facebook and I'm working on building Instagram. So those are like my okay. three platforms that I tend to be drawn to more than the others. So what I would do on um, Facebook specifically is I will go into groups like under your personal page, not even not your personal page, but they have um, like a professional page that still shows your face instead of like a logo, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like your personal brand page. I would okay. go under that account and then add, I would join a bunch of groups that are about um, grief, you know, just lost my grandma. Like there's groups like that. You know what I'm saying? And you can join mm -hmm. a bunch of those groups, give people tips and stuff like that in the group. Um, and then they'll say, wow, that was great. And then make a click on your pro profile or something like that. Um, and then they'll see that you're a grief coach, you know, and th because the rest of your feed content will show stuff about being a grief coach or a grief counselor. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, I, would, I would do that. I would go into groups and give people a lot of like, advice okay. um and stuff like that you can also give them like a tip and if they come back for more you can point them to like one of your services or okay. something okay um so that's what i would do and then linkedin um linkedin since i'm not sure if there will be like specifically for grief counseling but i still think it would be worth it to go on there and talk to other people you know what i'm saying because a lot of people are dealing with with that even if they are on linkedin and stuff like that so i would also just promote your um services over there okay i think that would be great i mean i'm just a linkedin fan so okay great thank you so much sis i appreciate you yeah no problem yeah um and y'all i'll just say because i saw this as a theme in the chat a lot around like and there's even a question on this so i'll bring that one up next actually for you to answer jazz um around identifying your target audience. And like I just said, if, if I had a nickel for every time I heard, like, I don't want to exclude people, like this kind of is applicable to everybody, I would I would have a lot of money, okay? Um, it is so important, it is so important. And this is not just marketing, like this is literal like business development, like go to market strategy, like this is the core, like Walmart, as soon as I said it, y'all already thought about a certain sector of the economy, of socioeconomic statuses, et cetera, right? 
Walmart has so yeah. much money, they could serve everybody, but do they? No, they come in with the commercial low, 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 low. That is a trigger for somebody that says, oh my goodness, I'm on a budget. It is not the trigger yeah. for the person that wants the Louis Vuitton bag and can get it all day in and out because they got old money, right? Just yeah. like Louis I always say, Yeah. I always say that if Charmin toilet paper has a target audience, because mm -hmm. everybody uses toilet paper. Everybody mm -hmm. should be using toilet paper, you mm -hmm. know? So if they got a target audience, then mm -hmm. we should, you know you what have I mean? Because, yeah, yeah, because even though like the Turo, and actually like to the last person who was up here, you do have a target audience because at the very least you have a starting point because you know who they're not. You know they're not on TikTok or you know that they're not that younger demographic that's typically on TikTok. You know, um, at the very least, what I would do to find your target audience is I would look at the social media platforms that you're on, look at the the clients that you've had in the past, like who typically comes to you. Look at the data. This person can be, you know, like this person can now be your target audience if you don't want to choose somebody. Because you're right, like you could serve anybody, you know, you and if somebody comes to you who's not in your target audience, yeah. you don't have to turn them away, you know. But it sounds to me like, you know, she actually kind of did have a target audience even if she didn't realize it. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, so just I just want everybody in the chat to understand that, right? Like if you are trying to help children who have lost parents, immediately that brings something to your mind. You have to talk a different way, right? But the people who have lost a parent, I promise you they're going to respond to the therapist who is speaking directly to them. Their family is going to respond to the people who are speaking directly to them versus the people like, yeah, I do grief, right? Like you are missing out on so much money by not doing what Walmart does, right? By not doing what Porsche does, right? Like you have to hit the gunshot wound so that people stop in their tracks versus, yeah, I sell some chapstick, right? That's very different from, do you suffer with eczema? Do you have flaky skin? Oh, it's like, ooh, right. ooh let me run, right? Okay, I'm going to... Uh, go to some questions for you, Jazz. Um, another question. Okay, this one is from China Bailey. Uh, she says, which platform is best for starting your business, especially if your audience will be on all platforms? Which one, which one would you put more energy into? Um, with that, that sounds like a vague target audience to me, actually. Um, I feel like your target audience, they're on something specific. You know, personally, I feel like if you're just kind of doing like a catch all, I think Instagram's a good way to go. And I also think TikTok's great. But TikTok, you got to have TikTok's only great if you're really, truly willing to make a ton of videos, you know. Um, otherwise, I would just kind of stay away from it. But, um, but overall, I would say, you know, at like whittle down on your target audience first so that way you can see where they're at the most. Um, or I would look at where your competitors are, you know, if you have like, if your if your competitors are like corporations and stuff like that, like if your biggest, you know, um, competitor is like Maybelline, you know, they're going to be everywhere and that that's cute for them, you know, but I would, I would try to whittle it down and, and pick one or two. Well, I would pick like two, um, but I would say like Instagram for sure. Um, but also to really to really be able to answer that, which platform you should be on, whether you're just starting in business or not, um, it doesn't really matter like where you're at in business, you know? Um, so yeah, I would I would just focus more on where your target audience is at. So good. And people in the chat are saying that's a great question. They appreciate that. Thank you for the tips. Um, again, because we're in a vein, this is what the workshops are. Like, think about think about the people that chose to give the painkiller commercials during Matlock during in the middle of the day for our big mamas, right? Like, yes, they could have given painkillers to the lady with menstrual cycles, and you know, like, of course, right? But they literally chose 2 p.m. on the weekdays in the middle of Matlock and um guiding light, right? Like, you know, like think they could have gone on Black Planet. Let's be real, Black Planet was popping right like they could have gone on on all these chat rooms right but they chose there so y'all gotta like get yeah jazz is right like get more specific because if she just told you that 14 to 20 uh 18 to 24 year olds are on tiktok and you serve and retire raise and you still trying to figure out your tiktok strategy i'm confused uh i'm gonna bring alexis up jazz okay alexis okay. the mic is yours hey there can you hear me <clears throat> yes Awesome. So um, kudos to you. I absolutely love your presentation. Of course, I do what you do. So I was in the background talking about, yes, yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yes. 
So, but I do, I want you, uh, in the, in the uh, spirit of case, I want you to take up space because um, what you do is not simple. It's not easy. Um, social media marketing requires that we know SEO optimization. We know content strategy. We have to do marketing research. And in that content strategy, we have to learn how to engage, inspire, and educate, right? Mm -hmm. We have to be data scientists. We have to read analytics. Those are things that are very hard to do as a solo entrepreneur or a solo business owner. So <laughs> as much as we want to give you the tools or, you know, we, but as much as, you know, the speakers want to give you the tools to be able to, to do it on your own, um, know that that social media piece is an extension of your overall marketing. And if you have a budget in marketing, you might want to consider bringing somebody on if anything, even if they're coming to consult. So if they're not touching anything, and they're just consulting, let them consult you, <laughs> walk through it, have a weekly meeting with somebody that is an expertise in this field, because it's very, very, very difficult to do it on your own. Um, do it, it, do it substantially like, on your own. Back in like 2009, you can slap up a couple of posts, it would be perfectly fine. That could be your social media strategy. But now, you know, it's a real viable way to build your business. You know, like you could take it as far as you want to take it. And so that goes for social media in your business as well. So it is something that should be prioritized. You know, I absolutely agree with everything that you just said. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and I like what you do. <laughs> it's a profile piece for pieces. You better give this branding. You better give yes. this. Shit yes. you better give it. <laughs> Thank you, mama. Love you. All right. Um, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, I'm going to go back to the Q&A because you all have a lot of a lot of questions. Uh, a few more minutes. Let's go to Winnie. Winnie asks, do you think there will ever be an instance when all the social media platforms go down at the same time? If so, what strategy would you employ against that? If that ever happened, it sounds like the internet's broke itself more than just like you know, like, I just I don't see that happening. Like, I don't think they're all on the same server, you know, but in that case, I guess you would just have to email them at that point. Like, you know, if it's down, there's really nothing you can do as far as social media. Yeah, build your email list. Absolutely. So that's what I would suggest. Like, make sure you have an email list to have some type of way that's yours that you can contact your your people, you know. Um, or at least have a good website that they can refer to and you could put some type of message, a SMS text system. You know, you want to have something, some type of a backup. But as far as every single platform going down, I don't see that happening. Um, I don't see that happening. I don't think that's, um, I don't, yeah, I don't think that's a concern you should have. You know, I don't, I don't think that would happen. Casey, what do you think? Yeah, I agree. And I love what you said almost immediately. Like, you should have an email list. Uh, social media followers do not equal ownership. Why? Because all you have, okay, is the you, you, username and they can change it tomorrow and do, right? So, who you DM it tomorrow, if you know, uh, ownership equals things like what Jazz just said, email address, right? It equals things like users in your own ecosystem, your decentralized platform, right? It equals you having people's contact information because you do these, you know, perfect fit calls, discovery calls. You have the phone number, you have the name, you have the address, right? Like uh, you have to own the relationship to get through these bend but don't break cycles because the stuff will go down, you know, episodically, right? One at a time. Yeah, yeah. But if you if you launch it and you got an email address, it's like, why do you care? You don't. It's just like, okay, y'all get this coupon, right? Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. Um, okay, so I'm going to flip it back to a person that has their hand up. Oh, no more hands right now, actually. Uh, if you raise your hand and you're gone now, just raise it again. We have a few more minutes. Um, let me make sure I'm not lying. We have a few more minutes. Uh, I'm gonna put Dondra's question up for you, Jazz. Would you use LinkedIn if you? St I love this one. Oh man, because mm -hmm. it, it's the trying to grow in uh, not plain sight, like hidden sight. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, would you use LinkedIn if you still work full time? It depends on your goals. Like, if you're perfectly happy with your position, you know then maybe it's not necessary, you know? Like, I, I'm not a believer in adding stuff to your plate just cause, you know? Um, so if, if it's, if, but if you do, or if you are somebody who wants to move up, or if you wanna, you know, if you're somebody who's not afraid to leave a job, if this one over here is paying better, you know, if you're like a job hopper, I support that. 
you know. So, um, so yeah. Um, it, yeah, if you have a full time job, there definitely is benefits. It just depends on what your goals are. Um, but yeah, so if you want to like move up your career, if you feel like interacting with people in your industry will benefit you. Um, if you're somebody who pulls in clients, you know, for your business or your recruiter, you know, there's a ton of different. It just it depends on like your goals and also like what you do, um, how you how moving up in your industry or field typically happens. But I think there's definitely a ton of reasons why somebody who works full time should be on um, LinkedIn. I say, I say, um, and, and I'll underscore something that Jazz said earlier in her presentation around expertise, right? Like, um, and this is very underutilized, but like, let's say you're like a merchandising executive for Nordstrom. I don't know, right? And you're just posting every day about industry best practices. Now, they don't know you, but they don't know you're just side gig, but like, there's nothing fishy about that. There's nothing fishy about being a visible uh, expert in your most profitable skills. Right. But I promise you, those DMs will slide in. Right. If you are a banker, there is nothing fishy about you posting about the disruptive, inclusive financial products such as mobile money movements and like peer to peer lending. Ain't nothing fishy about that. But I promise you, you'll get those DMs. Right. And so there are ways to be cold in plain sight. Right. And, and magnetize the relationship that you want. And you should. You don't have to do the pitch at the end. I don't do that anyway. Right. I don't go on LinkedIn and be like 30 percent off coupon. I'm talking about like disruption in the world right and i get dms all the time so jazz mentioned that earlier it's the expertise play not the diy play right yeah um, okay i see a hand raised um we got four minutes i'll try to squeeze two more questions in okay and then we're actually going to have uh latoya and hannah come to the stage to introduce themselves formally to you all as well so fyi uh be ready for that china I hope I'm saying your name right, beautiful. I'm bringing you up. You have the mic. Hi. Yes, you are saying my name correct. So my question is, okay, so what is your opinion on um, content batching? Like, do you think that's a lazy method? Do you think it's smart? Um, is it something that is looks boring over time? Or like, what, what are your views on um, just recording or creating um, content just like in one sitting? Um, I think it's both lazy and smart. Like, you know, just cause it's lazy, that don't mean it's bad. I think it's really, actually that's not even true because batching is a lot of work. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of work. It's, it's a chunk of time. You know, I think batching is the ideal way to things. Unless you're like a realtor or you have stuff that comes up, you know, throughout the month or a hairstylist, you finish my style and you want to post it as it is. Really there's methods around that too. But I think that, it's the, the way to go. I think batching is the way to go, especially if you're somebody who runs a business and you're also running your own social media account. I think posting day by day is a slippery slope. It is not something that you would want to do. I think getting it, you know, planned out is better to, you can also get, um, like, plan out your feed, the visuals better. Um, if that's something that's important to you, your aesthetics, um, you can plan out your launches in advance. It's a, to me, that's an important part of strategizing. I've like a good strategic content plan is planning ahead, and batching is a part of that. You know, so get everything laid out at one time, preferably like two weeks to a month ahead, and then you can do that, and you can focus on other areas of your business, and then just engage throughout the month and that and share reshare re to your stories. And I think that's a better use of your time than trying to make content every single day. Okay, thank you so much. And you also answered my next question, um, I guess, is how far in advance should you do that? So thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you, China. Beautiful, beautiful jazz. Um, all right, I am going to um, put the last question up. Uh, you've gone through a lot of these, jazz. So uh, bless you, bless you. Um, all right, so the last one's going to come from Pamela. And she asks, if we want to hire you for your services, how do we get the process started? Ashe. Okay, I love that. So um, you can just, you can go to my Instagram and click the link in my bio. I'll type my website. And at the top, there's a bar that you can click and it says like, click here to apply for services. And you'll be able to click that and go see um, everything else. Oh, thank you for dropping my ad. So you can also follow me on Instagram. Um, and there's like a link in my bio that you can click to apply for services. 
um, yeah, so that's how you would get, get in contact with me. Beautiful. Uh, thank you so much, Jazz. You are amazing. Like, I don't even, I don't even know if you realize how many like heavy, 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 heavy gems you drop just like every other sentence. Um, and so folks, y'all digest this replay, but you are doing the Lord's work. Um, social reset social recession strategy is important because for the most part social is free or inexpensive right mm -hmm. um and that's how we've been but don't break throughout this time so thank you so much for edifying us sis we appreciate you thank you so much for having me i appreciate this more than you know oh of course of course take care all right y'all so uh we only have one more session left uh only one more session left and then we are going to move into whatever y'all want to do at the end of the day okay definitely go to the vendor booths definitely go to the vendor booths if you are on a mobile you if you are on a mobile uh you missing out because you actually can't go to their tables there are going to be a lot of vendors that are dropping stuff in the feed the big chat right around happy hours they're doing giveaways they're doing bingos they're doing what else have i heard they're doing a lot of stuff y'all uh table talks etc uh super super dope people right um on the laptop you actually get to sit at their tables you can't go inside the booths uh on your phone though but i would definitely recommend you you pull up on the laptop um we're gonna right before our last session i'm gonna bring up the two co-founders of blaze group okay uh if i've learned anything on this entrepreneurial journey about bending but not breaking it is that it is that you need monsters building with you if you are to scale. I'm not talking about the person that's waiting for you to tell them what to do. I'm not talking about, you know, people who can get through the the, the minutia when you don't want to be deep into things. I'm talking about people who can literally run full verticals of plays, right? And so uh, Blaze Group in the last couple of months has actually brought on uh, two co-founders where we're building this thing together, okay? Head of product, that's Latoya Dixon Smith. I'm, I'm pulling them up right now as I'm speaking this. Uh, that is Latoya Dixon Smith. Uh, and I'm gonna try to talk and do this at the same time. And Hannah White, who is our chief operating officer. Um, super, super dope ladies. I'm gonna stop talking so I can hit these buttons real quick. Yeah. Uh, but they want to introduce themselves to you. Uh, uh, Toya, hit the hand at the bottom of the screen because I can't I can't invite you right now for some reason. Let me try you, Hannah. I think I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, Hannah and Toya, I see y'all. Uh, all right, Hannah, Mike. And feel free to just jump right in, Toya. All right, hey, Case. Uh -oh. All right, well, I think I didn't do my... And here's Hannah to y'all. And I am one of the co-founders of Blaze Group. Uh oh, I think Toya is having um, internet issues. Can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you now. Okay, let me slow down as well. Maybe that's also, that'll help. Uh, coming to you from Greenville, South Carolina, um, and excited to be a part of the Blaze community officially. Um, I am all things operations, that's my background operations, workflow, process management, change management, and now as a head of product. So I'm going to be the person who's going to be like rooting for y'all to go ahead and join the Blaze Group app. Um, we have a wonderful community inside the app called the Blaze Women's Network. Um, and I look forward to seeing all of you throughout the rest of this week. Okay. Thank you, Toya. All right. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Hannah, and <laughs> I'm also from Greenville, South Carolina, but currently based in London as I'm pursuing my master's. Um, and I am coming into the role of chief operating officer here with Blaze. Um, but I kind of had a, a 360 testimony of really came in as a fellow um, under Casey um on doing some research concerning black women entrepreneurs we hit it off she also helped me with some research when i was in undergrad and from there came into consulting and now now coming into the role of chief operating officer so really grateful for this community this family i'm getting just as much if not more from this summit as i know all of you all are um but yeah i'm really excited i know i've met some of you all 
through another like different events. I saw Erica in here, and I remember seeing you at another event for the part or the Backbone documentary. So I'm so glad to see you here. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to continue to meet you all through the Blaze Group app and throughout this week. Um, so yeah. Okay. Ashe, thank you, uh, Hannah, thank you, Toya, and ladies, uh, this is not faking it until you make it, this is being it until you see it, right, in the beginning, a lot of y'all know my name very well, I'm about to sign a, a receipt real quick, a lot of y'all know my name very well, because you all knew that uh, for a long time, it was me building, right, and at, in the beginning days, I'll be very, very real about it, right, it was more so me having the people who could run the plays and, and be in the minutia, right? But it is very, very hard to scale. I saw Alexis Miller say, you telling the truth, right? We, we talk about this a lot when she needed a CTO. It's hard to scale without the monsters. But this is important for Black women because only 3%, write this word down, or write this number down, only 3% of Black women-owned businesses have a C-suite. That is sad. Like, sit in that. Like, sit in Because I'm talking about, I'm talking about most of us in this space right now right only three percent of all black women-owned businesses thank you for writing in the chat Brittany. have a c-suite sit in that right yet we are starting 42 percent of all businesses created by women every single day in the united states 42 percent right as a matter of fact carver said that 17 percent of all black women are right now starting or running new businesses that's one in five are starting to running new businesses yet most of us will never have help that's up here not not down here but up here right and so we are not faking it until we make it right we are being it until we see it like toya legit starts full-time july 1st like like we legit like out here like and that's the same thing you can do right hannah graduates from her master's program in london like september right like but literally in October, like she's stepping into that CEO capacity. And so uh, this is important to us, right? This is important to us that we, as we climb, we lift you. Uh, I love these ladies with all my heart. Like I've never been surrounded with with this type of love where I don't have to shrink. I've had to shrink a lot of my life because uh, of the way I made people feel about who I was, right? Um, but just know that heaven is here. I mean that. I ain't going to preach. But uh, ladies, anything else y'all want to say? before we uh shana said what is a c-suite one of y'all can actually answer that question because it's a good unless it's being i don't know if that's being like sarcastic or not but if y'all can explain what a c-suite is because i don't want to take that for granted uh what is a c-suite so c-suite and specifically uh c-suite is just really leadership top leadership that is allowing you to think high level to strategically scale your business. So typically you hear a chief operating officer, a chief executive officer, chief marketing. It can be in different facets that continue to help the business grow and scale. Um, but the unique thing about specifically the fractional C-suite is where you'll have a third party or third entity C-suite individuals come to your business. Typically either it can be part-time um but they typically have different businesses that they're also working with but overall they're helping you to think high level about strategy and about your goals um without being so focused on that day-to-day -day that you often are as being whether a solo entrepreneur or just working with a few um yeah a few on your team so overall see chief chief officers in different industry or different um i guess linear paths that really help you scale and think high level about the trajectory of your business. Ashe, thank you so much, Hannah. And so because of what Hannah mentioned, where you actually don't have to tell people what plays to run because the, the CEO should not be the, the hardest working person in the in the business. I'm gonna say that one more time. The CEO should not be the hardest working person in the business. Why? Because who's dreaming dreams about what's gonna happen in 25 years if it's, if it's not the CEO? If you're so bogged down, and like being the marketing person and the operations person and the strategy person and the accountant, right? And the, and the chief financial officer, because that's the projections person. That ain't the bookkeeper, right? Then you can't possibly, you literally cannot possibly be creating the relationships today that'll get you where you want to be in five years. And so the C-suite, the chief suite, right? Chief marketing officer, chief operating officer, chief revenue officer, chief commercial officer. These are real roles, right? Uh, chief product officer, right? 
These are the people that actually run the plays in their vertical, meaning they do the hiring, the policies, the procedures, right? Like the fundraising at times, right? Like so much stuff. And you actually run into plays to see, oh, well, you get to dream dreams all day like Steve Jobs did when he said, I want to create a phone with no buttons. That what? No, not now, but that wasn't the intern, okay? That wasn't the bookkeeper, okay? Like, that ain't them. It's the CEO. I share it. Um, all right, y'all. I hope this is helpful. Y'all going to see a lot of the lot of Toya and Hannah. Uh, I love y'all ladies so much. They'll be popping in every day of the summit so that y'all get to know them um as much as in more than okay you know me uh i love y'all so 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 deep thank you for everything that y'all do uh day in and day out all right y'all so we have the last session of the day okay last session of the day um with felicia gopal she is actually amazing uh forgive me felicia for running running past i really don't like doing this uh forgive me for running past a couple of minutes because i actually want to give a quick quick shout out to people who are on the leaderboard um because i'm I've, I've been uh checking it all day and it's kind of changing uh dana let me tell y'all something now dana started off as number one okay and dana is still in the top three don't play with dana she is number two right now i had to shout her out first but china has actually slipped in in the number one spot she's in the number one spot with 5010 points and then alexis miller our girl another social uh or marketing guru i'll call her a marketing and branding guru she is number three um, but we have some other Christina Ten Christina King is in the top 10. Coach Wim. Okay, coach. She's in the top, the top 10. Amber Hart, Nicole Murphy, Donja Butler, Karen Moore, Renee Moore. But 15 people will win. Yvonne, I see you at spot number 14. Andrea, I see you at 15. Ahira, I see you at 13. Sharina, I see you at 12. Sakisha, I see you at 11. All right. So keep going, uh, keep engaging, have one-on-one -on -one meetings with each other, DM, go to the tables, et cetera, okay? One more session and we're done, but go into the booths and go forth. Now, I forgot to say this earlier, okay? Got to say this earlier. We want the entire world to feel this at home because Black women deserve all the things, okay? And so if you want to be a part of our syndicate, we're streaming out to about uh 21 different places right now like we in the club okay so there are literally 21 other platforms watching us right now much like oprah doing oprah right one day she was on all the channels at the same time people like hello who is this right uh so we're getting our oprah on uh because she's cleared the pan so if you want to also stream all of these sessions to your platforms okay that is uh youtube that is facebook that is twitter any of these things you can actually sign your platform up at blazebroadcast.com, blazebroadcast.com. And I promise I'll go in um, and make sure that we allow you to syndicate it too. That's every single session. No gatekeeping here. Why? Because black women deserve all the things, okay? <laughs> uh, and if you're friends, some of y'all been DMing me. I love the DMs. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, people can still register. It's still absolutely free. If they register, they get the replay for three months. If they don't register, they don't. I mean that, okay? I mean that now. Uh, Excuse me. So, uh, bladebroadcast.com. Keep going with the leaderboard. I don't think I have anything else to say. So, I'll see y'all on the very last session. This one about money, y'all. Okay. This one is about money. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. It is called Five, Find Money to Start a Business. Find Money to Start a Business from Felicia Gopal out of Irvine, California. I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.